Hey everyone, it is the Charming Giraffe and it is Tuesday so it is our recap video for our paintings for the week. So we're going to start with the one we did last Wednesday. This was a, the um, flip cup um, ice cube tray flip um, using the rainbow colors. This is the one where I did like red in both and then put orange on top. And I did orange in both and put yellow on top of that. Then I did yellow and put green and green and then put blue, blue, purple, purple, pink, all the way down. Um, beautiful. Um, my dog's going to start barking here in a minute. Um, I'm just going to turn it sideways just to make it easier to bring up to the camera. But on this red and orange, there's not a lot of contrast, but there still is a lot of like cell action through here. So it's really pretty. And then through the greens, blues, and yellows, um, a little bit of a uh, blending there. I really like, where did it go? This area. These little cells that have, I'm like trying to make them bigger for you. <laughs> that doesn't work in real life. Um, that has like little yellow cells on top of the little like orange and red cells. So it's really cool. Uh, and then we'll go down to this side of the painting. We get the gold a little bit in there. Um, this blue stripe that looked really pretty or the purple it was my favorite. Sorry guys, you're moving. Um, while it was wet, it's still pretty cool, but it did dry like so dark that you can't really see the contrast as much in it now as you could before. So hopefully when it gets um, sealed, that will pop a little bit more like it did when it was wet. Just a little bit of glitter on here. And then next is the blue and neon yellow, I believe. It may have been regular yellow, but I think it was neon um, flip cup. Uh, this dried, I'm pretty sure, exactly as it was. I think these came up a little bit stronger than it was in the original, but not, not bad. They didn't take over anything. Um, still really pretty. Not a lot of contrast just because all those colors were so similar to each other. Um, but yeah, I'm sure that I can do something to embellish that one in the future. Then this one was a take on that one. I think this was next. I might have these out of order, but I think this one was next. Um, using practically the same colors, but just black and gold instead of white and silver. Um, and this was using the dust pan where I put all the paint in the dust pan and then kind of drug it across, but then it kind of just went everywhere. So we will practice that. Um, but really pretty. I like the way the gold is like kind of shining in this one. Um, I don't think it moved too much. This was my favorite area, uh, when it was wet, but yeah, it's still really pretty. Got some cells in there. Sorry, you're still moving. Um, we got all the different shades of blue because of the different shades of blue I put in the, in the dust pan. But yeah, I'm really happy with this one. Um, not some little bitty cells, not any really big cells, but that's okay. I'm, I'm happy with it. And then this was the one, it was a clean pour with the, um, paint from Apple Barrel and mixed with glue and water instead of with Floetrol and water. And uh, this is just a clean pour where I just poured it out of the container straight onto the canvas and then just moved it around. Um, I love the way this turned out. Much more cells came up than what it looked like when it was drying. I think that was a drip. Sorry, we think that was a drip there and there. Not a big deal. And they're actually almost center with each other, so it was really cool. Uh, still got a little bit of um, of that those colors blending together. Um, this white almost kind of looks like it's like floating on top, like, like smoke or something, um, in the painting. The other thing that's really, I noticed is the texture of this is a lot different than the texture of my other paintings. Um, so I may, I don't know if that's because of the glue or if that's because of the apple barrel paint. So I may, um, do some tests with apple barrel paint and Floetrol and then glue with the, um, Artist Law Flow Acrylic and see what those differences are on the texture because I like this texture a lot better. Um, it just feels smoother. I'm not sure. Uh, but that was that one. And then next is the bottle bottom pour using a different bottle bottom than normal. It's got more um, crevices. Sorry guys, keep bumping you. It's got more crevices to make these designs. And um, this is also the one where I pulled the paint out of the middle using the syringe. 
I still have that paint in the syringe, so we will be using that in a future painting. Um, but there was still too much paint on the canvas. It did run off on this side, and then it did push back and kind of hug this line. It never actually went over that line, but it did kind of hug it. And then we got all of this breakage here. Um, similar, I think like nearly every week we have at least one painting that has where there's too much paint on the canvas, so it like breaks apart. Um, so yeah, um, that's okay though, because I do have some things I want to do with this. Um, if you remember, we couldn't really get the yellow in the middle, so this opens it up to where you can put some yellow in the middle. Uh, so I will uh, work on that one. I may show you what I do with that one whenever I get around to it. And then finally, yesterday's was a tree ring pour using um, like gold black white red and i think neon yellow is in here and once again too much paint on the canvas i think that's what's causing this i know when i'm diligent in removing the paint i don't have this so i think that's the cause um, but once again i've got some ideas i've got some tools i want to try out and this actually looks really cool because like where it separated is like still has like all these really cool lines like veins in here so when i go to fill it in i think it'll look pretty awesome so i'll probably show you that one too um i want to do a series later in the year where i fix blunders like this in your painting so whenever you accidentally do something like this or other like oops how am i going to fix this then I'll show you different ways. So with that being said, if you have tried paint pouring and you are having issues with anything or you've stuck your hand in it, dropped it, I probably can't fix you dropping it, but <laughs> um, anything that's made you go, ah, how am I going to fix this? Feel free to leave them in the comments. I will read those and see if I've experienced similar things and what I've done to um, like kind of cover it up or fix it. Um and we will do a whole series on that separately um it'll still be on the channel though so just stay tuned update upload a video every day um but yeah i have i have several paintings that i'm like ah that didn't turn out the way i wanted what can i do to either fix it or to make it work with the picture so i do want to thank you for watching if you have any suggestions you'd want to see leave them in the comments i will be happy to um, provide you with that content and thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and do what makes you happy.